For many millennials, our first introduction to the notion of nightmarishly devastating climate change came to us through Roland Emmerich's The Day After Tomorrow, which surprisingly came out before Al Gore's critically acclaimed climate change documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. Now, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, this film is a guilty pleasure of mine. I mean, sure, there's a ton of issues with the scientific accuracy of this movie, and even the general flow or pacing of this often crazy story, but I just fucking love me a fun disaster flick. So suffice it to say, I was genuinely pleased to see that this film won one of my community polls. A poll stemming from a channel that primarily discusses fucking zombies. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Be that as it may, I'm going to be breaking down the global superstorm in the day after tomorrow, in order to ascertain what your odds of survival would be. But we're not just going to be covering the prelude to the storm or just the storm itself. We're also going to be talking about the disastrous aftermath of this cataclysmic global event. Because believe it or not, surviving the storm will not be the only challenge you face in such a fictional catastrophe. So with that said, sit back and relax, because this is going to be one hell of a chill video. Before the global superstorm forms, and proceeds to aggressively violate the northern hemisphere, there is a series of events or cascading weather anomalies which precede the worldwide super mega death hurricane. These incidents, almost all of which are record-breaking calamities on their own, serve as warning signs for the upcoming crisis which will plunge the world into an ice age, all in less than a fucking week. And the very first sign we get is the detachment of a Rhode Island-sized glacier breaking away from the Larsen Ice Shelf in Antarctica. Now, Rhode Island may be the smallest state in America, but it's still over 1,000 square miles in size. This isn't the largest ice shelf breaking in history, but it is pretty concerning and a clear sign of shit going wrong. Not long after, we see it snowing in New Delhi, India, which is pretty rare. And then a bunch of scientists get warnings from deep sea or open ocean temperature monitoring buoys which record the literal beginning stages of a North Atlantic sea current collapse, which, by the way, can certainly happen in real life, and which we seemingly are on track to experience in a few decades. And no, the collapse of said current will not lead to a superstorm like it does in the movie, but it would, however, be a serious problem for the Northern Hemisphere as it would cause dramatic cooling, severely disrupting ecosystems, weather systems, and our ability to grow fucking food. That being said, we then see a massive hailstorm occur in Tokyo, with killer chunks of ice that fall from the sky at terminal velocity, skull-fucking anyone in their way. We then briefly see, on the news, that a record-breaking hurricane hits some random island system, while also learning of planes falling from the sky due to turbulence, which is pretty wild, by the way. And then we eventually see the formation of multiple F5 tornadoes in Los Angeles. While we don't see what happens everywhere else, I think we can safely conclude that other areas around the globe also ended up experiencing batshit crazy weather events, like record rain, flooding, snowfall, and more tornadoes and hurricanes and so forth. All in all, I think it's fairly safe to conclude that the lead up to this storm is pretty dangerous in its own right. Once the global superstorm fully develops in the film, we end up seeing a massive storm surge hit the city of New York. Now odds are this global superstorm comes with a worldwide storm surge that affects the rest of the planet's coastlines in a similar manner. At least the coastlines above the 37th parallel, which is the portion of the planet which will be directly impacted by the storm. But more on that later. Once the storm fully forms, the climate would deteriorate to the point where we'd see blizzards on a continental scale all with whiteout conditions. And these aren't your typical blizzards either. You see, the amount of snowfall that is generated as a result of this storm is insane. It's literally enough to bury a multi-story shopping mall under a thick blanket of snow. All of this makes traversing outside while the storm is active incredibly dangerous for the average person. What place is for? Anyone who happens to be in the path of the eye of this megastorm will have to contend with a wind chill unlike any in human history. You see, when the eye is overhead, frigid air rushes to the surface, air that is so cold it can freeze the fuel lines of a helicopter, knocking it out of the sky, while also then nearly instantly freezing people to death. Which, by the way, would not be a painless death. So given all of this information, 
you could easily say goodbye to the energy grid and water infrastructure. Then there's the fact that everyone above the 37th parallel is determined to be impossible to evacuate in time. This region of the entire fucking planet is home to the majority of the human race. We're literally talking about 4 to 5 billion people who are at risk of dying as a direct result of the global superstorm. Now, obviously some would survive this, but we're still looking at several billion people dying as a direct result of freezing temperatures, starvation, and or dehydration. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not cool. Now, if you're south of the storm, expect absolute chaos from the mass exodus of refugees coming from the north. Violence and supply shortages will cripple the global economy and probably collapse many energy grids and other vital economic and water-based infrastructure around the world. As such, one could expect many more deaths to occur as a direct result of violence and or exposure to the natural elements, along with starvation and or dehydration. There seriously won't be a single society that is insulated from the effects of this generational storm. Like, this is literally almost on par with a global nuclear war. Almost. So the worst event in recorded human history is now officially over. And you may just be thinking to yourself, wow, I'm safe and out of the woods. But here's the thing. The fuck you ain't. With the collapse of the United States, Europe, Russia, and China, we would see the collapse of global food and energy production. We'd also see the collapse of global trade and technological advancement. The world would be thrown into a massive economic depression where widespread famine would plague countless nations for several months to several years. Now, y'all might not know this, but hundreds of millions of people around the world are reliant on U.S. food production alone, excluding Europe, Russia, and China. There would also certainly be civil unrest and localized societal collapses as millions of refugees seemingly overtake the populations of southern nations. I can see mass killings on an epic proportion being committed by struggling governments, warlords who rise to power in the absence of rule of law, and even civil wars erupting. Countries might even engage in open warfare over access to strategic resources. Then there's also the risk of disease outbreaks occurring due to the increased population density in certain regions, an issue which would be exacerbated by the worsening of sanitation conditions in said host countries. It would also be safe to assert that malnutrition would contribute to the spread of disease, as well as, without the proper nutrients and diet, people's immune systems would be far weaker. Odds are, even if you survive the storm, you'd likely die to dehydration, starvation, disease, or some form of political violence in the aftermath of this apocalyptic event your life expectancy would also drop significantly along with your standard of living, even if you happen to avoid death by the aforementioned causes, simply because the world would be largely thrown back into a pre-industrial era, at least for most regions around the globe. While the film ends on a somber but upbeat and hopeful tone, reality would actually be far dimmer. Despite all that we've covered thus far, the question at the core of this thought experiment still remains unanswered. Could you survive the day after tomorrow? When looking at the prelude to the global superstorm, you actually stand a good chance of surviving the multiple weather anomalies which break out across the planet, simply because they might not happen near you. But some of you might not be so lucky. Some of you might actually die in a plane crash due to unrealistic turbulence. Some of you might be swept away by the F5 tornadoes in Los Angeles, or by the record-breaking hurricane that devastated some unnamed territory. And those of you in Tokyo might not have an ice time with the super hailstorm. But all of this pales in comparison to the global superstorm itself. Most people live along the coast. As such, many of you living above the 37th parallel will drown when the super storm surge smacks into your coastal region without warning. For those of you living in rural areas, the solution won't be as easy as Herb dare just gotta keep myself warm as the record-shattering snowfall will lead to many homes experiencing roof collapses. And even if your home has the ability to sustain multiple floors of snowfall, I can guarantee you that you personally would not be able to dig your way out of being buried in 30 to 40 feet of snow. And those of you who are unfortunate enough to be stuck in the eye of the storm, well, you're cooked. Or in this case, you're getting turned into a human popsicle. If you have no idea what's coming, 
or are unaware of the eye being above your location, you simply won't have the time to build a large enough fire to survive the permafreeze that's to come. And once the storm is over, your region might not even be prioritized for rescue operations. So have fun trying to survive in arctic conditions with no power or running water. For many of you, hiking to a warmer climate might even entail a several hundred to several thousand mile hike in bone chilling weather. Simply put, if you're above the line, you're probably going to die a painful death. And as previously mentioned, even if you survive the storm or are fortunate enough to be in the southern hemisphere, you won't be totally safe. Food scarcity, water scarcity, anarchy, political violence, war, pandemics, reduced healthcare coverage, civil unrest, and many other problems may just get you killed. And even if you don't die, as a direct result of what will be going wrong all around the world, you may just end up self-terminating yourself, as many of you will be suffering from trauma and or severe depression. There will undeniably be a mental health crisis in the aftermath of what is, essentially, the end of modern human civilization. So, uh, yeah, the letter's pretty cut and dry. Most of y'all are dead in this scenario. Anyways, if you like this sort of content, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell as well if you'd like to be notified when I publish a new video. And always remember that you may opine anytime you feel so inclined down in the comments section. I'm Captain Gold and I hope to see you in my next Gold Standard video.